Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a book haul. Now you will have figured out right away that this is a different type of filming than I normally do, but there was a few books that I got in this haul that I wanted to give you close up um, flip throughs of, and so I just decided to do the whole thing this way. So I hope you enjoy it. The first book that I picked up is this new edition of a short story collection of Agatha Christie's uh, short stories called Midwinter Murder, and I just think this book is beautiful. It is very, it's in the same collection as the Midsummer Mysteries that I have shown you in a previous book haul. Here is the back. I just think that this is such a beautiful book. Uh, I'm going to show you the um, end papers. Aren't those fantastic. I love the little snowflakes. I just love these additions. I think they are so beautiful. So these are Fireside Mysteries from the Queen of Crime. And here is a look at the short stories in this collection. And I love that there are some Christmas ones. And of course, all of these take place um, in the winter. And so we get some of the snowed in stories that I love. So that is Midwinter Murder. Next up, I found My Friends the Miss Boyds by Jane Duncan. Now, this is an author I have never heard of before, um, but this, the, this cover just caught my attention and I just thought that it was so fantastic. So, um, I... I thought that I would show you. This has been withdrawn from the, the library at the University of Saskatchewan Regina campus. So it's a library edition. And it is from 1968. It says here, this is the first of Miss Duncan's enchanting novels about her friends and there could be no better introduction to a sequence of novels destined for a very wide audience by a new writer of outstanding merit. And they tell the stories of the author's childhood in um, Scotland. And so I just, yeah, I just thought that was fantastic. This edition is from 1968, but it, the story was originally written in 1959. And I was just gonna do a quick flip through and see if there are any illustrations. No, there aren't, I couldn't remember. Here's a picture here of the author. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of Jane Duncan. And this one I am so excited about. This is Wilkie Collins, An Illustrated Guide by Andrew Gasson. And I am just so excited about this. Andrew Gasson actually created the Wilkie Collins Society. And uh, so this is going to be, yeah, I'm just super excited about this as a resource. On the back here, it says the father of detective fiction, make him laugh, make him cry, make him wait. With this succinct principle, Wilkie Collins changed the face of popular fiction. His sensational works challenged conventional genres and his extraordinary private life flouted conventional morality. Um, so yeah, I was gonna do a bit of a flip through, through here. First of all, look at this. This is, seriously, this is just a bonus. Um, the Master of Sensation, Vanity Fair cartoon, February 1872 by Andrio, and Adriano, Cecilioni, sorry, I totally butchered that. And the stamp on the back is Public Library Belfast, which I think is really cool. Okay, so a bit of a flip through here of this illustrated guide. This was uh, published in 1998. So here are the contents and there are um, uh, a number of appendices at the back too. So we've got the preface and the acknowledgements, the main works, a chronology. And then I wanted to show you how this was put together. I think this is really cool. Uh, so here's um, Royal Theatre Royal Adelphi putting on No Thoroughfare. And you're gonna see no thoroughfare coming up here a bit in in this video. So it's done alphabetically. 
and uh, and there are illustrations throughout and I am just super super excited to have this in my collection so I'm just gonna do a bit more of a flip through for you to see a few things so yeah there you have it Ooh. Here's a map of the residences of Wilkie Collins in Marlebone. And if you know anything about his personal life, you will know why that's significant. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited about that acquisition. Okay, next up we have this beautiful edition. This is Scotland, an anthology compiled by Paul Harris. Again, just a beautiful beautiful book. This is also an ex-library copy. First published in 1985. And, um, and yeah, so this is just, it just has stories um, set in Scotland. Stories and quotes. poems and each chapter has a lovely little illustration so yeah I'm excited about that one as well okay next up we have The General Danced at Dawn by George MacDonald Frazier uh, he is the author of the Flashman series, which I have never read any of. This is a standalone, and it just caught my it caught my eye. Um, here is the back. Fall in for laughter with Private Private Mikazian, the dirtiest soldier in the world. Private McGlinchey, Fitba Mad, Wee, Wee Wooly, the regiment's public enemy number one, very Highland pipe sergeant, and the general whose dancing ambitions knew no bounds. Uh, and so it's um, it's the story of this troop heading to some Highland games, and uh, yeah, it just looks like it's going to be entertaining. I was going to take a look here at the date of publication. This is from 1970. I was super excited to find a Susanna Kearsley. There are a few that I do not have of hers. And so this is named of the dragon. I was very excited to find this. This is set in um, Scotland on the Pembrokeshire coast. And there are authors and antique dealers. And it is set, oh, I just saw, it is set at Christmas. Ooh, I may have to add this to my <laughs> reading for December. I didn't know it was set at Christmas. Okay, very exciting. This one looked great. This one is actually true crime nonfiction. Mrs. Sherlock Holmes by Brad Rika. It was an Edgar Award finalist. The true story of New York City's greatest female detective and the 1917 missing girl case that captivated a nation. I was fascinated by this. I had never heard of this person or that case. And so, yeah, that just looked really good. A Bicycle Built for Murder by Kate Kingsbury. This is a historical cozy mystery, and it's actually the first in the Manor House Mystery Series, which I have three or four of, but I had never found the first one until now, so I'm very excited to get these. These are set in a village in England during World War II. The main character is Elizabeth Hartley Compton, and... Um, I really enjoyed the ones that I've read. So I've read the series out of order, but I'm very excited to find the first one. I picked up Wilkie Collins' Armadale. I, I want to collect all of his books. And so when I am able to get a hold of them, um, I grab them. So I'm very excited about that. And here is No Thoroughfare. This is a collaboration between Charles Dickens and Wilkie Collins. 
Um, and I, they did a number of collaborations. And so I'm very excited to, uh, to try that out. This novel began as a stage play, which is why you saw that um, advertisement at for the stage play in, um, in the Wilkie Collins Illustrated Guide. This is a fantastic edition of the Scarlet Pimpernel by the Baroness Orsi. I was so excited when I found this. This edition is from 1946. Um, I already have a copy of, no, not, yeah, it, um, 1943 and maybe updated to 1946. I already have a copy of the Scarlet Pimpernel, but I couldn't resist when I saw this one. Um, yeah, I love the story of the Scarlet Pimpernel. I got The Affair by C.P. Snow. It is a, a story set in a Cambridge college and that just looked interesting to me and it is, was published in Nineteen sixty, and then I found a Georges Simenon, um, a, a Maigret. This is the Great Banks Cafe. I like the Inspector Maigret series. All right, and I also found some more classics. I found Wessex Tales by Thomas Hardy. This is a collection of short stories. And I quite enjoyed The Mayor of Casterbridge, so I wanted to give some some of his books more of a shot, so I was excited to find that. I found Mariah Edgeworth, The Absentee. I've never read Mariah Edgeworth, but I've heard of her, so I grabbed it. This is a book from 19, 1812, and it's the third of her comic novels on Irish life. And um, so, yeah, I was excited to find that. I got um, Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. Never heard of this book or author, actually. Um, but it was published in 1771. And um, according to the back here, it is a fascinating picture of 18th century society. It's a tale of high good humor. So yeah, excited to give that one a try. Here's another one I'd never heard of. The Adventures of Mr. Verdant Green, an Oxford undergraduate by Cuthbert Bede. Verdant Green is one of the earliest examples of a, the Oxford novel. Originally published in three parts in 1853 through 1857, it is the archetypal picaresque comedy of a duffer, though not exactly a muff, who goes up to Oxford in the late 1840s without ever having left his country home even for school. And so Cuthbert Bede is the pseudonym of Edward Bradley, a clergyman writer whose own undergraduate days were spent at Durham. So yeah, I was excited to find that. I've got some possibilities for next year's Victober. I found a Phyllis Whitney. This is Silver Sword. This is another one of her later ones, so we will see. My guess is that I'm going to prefer her, her earlier ones, but that's okay. This is the Double Comfort Safari Club by Alexander McCall Smith from the number one ladies detective agency. This is number 11 in the series. And I just, I love that series so much. It is just gentle and wonderful. I found also the Saturday Big Tent Wedding Party, which is um, another one later in the series. This is a more recent one. Look at these end papers. Isn't that fantastic? This is from, oh, from 2011. So it's not as late in the series as I was thinking. Okay, this one I was so excited to find. This is Biblioholism, The Literary Addiction by Tom Robb. It says here that it is Biblioholism, Book of Books, the habitual longing to purchase, read, store, admire, and consume books in excess. 
Have you ever awakened the morning after a book buying spree, unable to remember the, how many you bought or how much you spent? Have you ever been reprimanded or fired for reading on the job? Have you ever purchased or rented additional living space just for your books? You are not alone. Your complete recovery awaits you. Just buy one more book. <laughs> this one just looks like it is going to be so much fun to read. I'm going to show you the uh, table of contents here so you can get a bit of an idea of what uh, what's in store. Yeah. One more. The Great Influenza by John M. Barry, the epic story of the deadliest plague in history with a new afterword on a variant flu. This is uh, the, the influenza of 1811. And I'm very interested, not 1811, 1918, sorry. <laughs> and I'm very interested in reading that and figuring out, uh, learning a little bit more about, um, about that history. So there you have it. That is my most recent book haul. I'd love to chat with you in the comment section down below. Have you read any of these books? Do any of these books look interesting to you? Let's chat and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.